Welcome to our third video about Bible study tips. Today, I'm gonna talk about reading a lot once a week. I know that in my previous video, I told you to read a little every single day, and that's true, I stand by that. This actually doesn't negate that, still do that but this will really take you to the next level. But before I dive in, I would ask you to take a second, please, to like this video, subscribe to this channel, that way you don't miss any of our awesome midweek content, or Church on the Weekends, New Life at Your House is here to help you love God and love people better every single day. All right, now, I should start by saying that this is probably my favorite tip of all, and that's once a week, read a lot. One of my old professors used to always recommend reading the whole Bible in one year, and to do this, they suggested reading three chapters a day and five on Sunday. Now, if you do that, you will get through the whole Bible in one year, it, it works. But did you catch that on Sundays, you would need to read almost twice as much? And that's because most people observe the Sabbath on Sunday, which is a great day to take extra time reading and studying the Bible. It's the one day in seven that we're given to rest and focus on a relationship with God. Reading a big chunk of the Bible once a week is a great addition or even a centerpiece to your Sabbath practice. But I realize not everybody has a Sabbath practice yet. So if you don't, if you haven't started implementing the Sabbath in your life yet, it is a great way to get started by reading a huge chunk of scripture. Many people will go to church on Sundays and that's all, but the Sabbath is supposed to extend beyond that. And it's a place where you're, you have time where you can just be alone with you and God, just you and him. So give this a shot. You'll definitely feel refreshed, you'll feel rejuvenated at the soul level before jumping back into your week. But let me give you four tips on how reading a lot once per week will work best for you. Number one, pick a whole book to read. I know, I know, it's crazy to hear me say that since I'm such a huge advocate of reading a little every day, but hear me out. There's no better way to get the big picture of what's being said than to hear it all at once. This is the reason why we love to watch movies all at once. Most of us don't watch movies just five minutes per day. The same reason we, we binge our favorite TV series when we can, it's because we wanna see what happens all at once, get the whole picture. And reading a whole book of the Bible at once will give you the same level of satisfaction. Now, let me just give you a caveat. You should choose wisely. Maybe start small, probably not in Psalms or Genesis or anything really long like that, but maybe one of the epistles, like the book of Ephesians. It has just six chapters. And then over time, as you get used to this, you can work your way up and maybe challenge yourself to read a bigger book such as Hebrews or Romans or even the Gospel of John. But whatever you decide, commit to see it through. Of course, pit stops are permitted. Do whatever you have to do, but do your best to get through the whole thing. Tip number two, stand up while reading. Hear me out, standing up, even walking around while reading, will help you stay more awake and attentive than reading while sitting or laying down, especially if you're already tired or if you're not particularly interested in what you're reading. Standing up will prevent dozing or nodding off and it'll help your body be engaged for the duration of the reading. If you've never done it, you just have to try it, believe me. It will actually help you with anything that you read. So if you're in school or work and you have reading material that's required like textbooks or reference works or manuals, anything like that, trust me, this will help you a ton, especially when reading God's word. Also, another cool reason, this is sort of an aside or a bonus, but is that standing up will convey a sense of honor. In many churches, if you've ever been to one, the congregation sometimes is asked to stand during the reading of the text that's being taught that morning. And it's all about honoring God and his word. We do this in other areas of our lives as well. Anytime you've ever sang the national anthem, everybody's asked to rise, or whenever somebody really important walks into the room, like a judge walking into a courtroom, anybody, everybody's instructed at that moment, please rise, honorable so-and-so, and why? It's because it honors the significance of the person or thing that we're bringing attention to. And God's word is definitely worthy of that as well. Number three, read it out loud. Now for me, this goes hand in hand with standing up. I absolutely love to read through an entire portion of scripture out loud while standing up. I've literally not found a better or more powerful way to internalize the total message that the author is making in the book that I'm reading. It just doesn't exist any other way. I don't just read it either like I'm reading to myself or under my breath. I read it like it's a story that I'm reading to kids or something that I'm reading for an audience, like I'm the person who wrote it. So stand up, project, put yourself in character. Your brain will do something completely different with the content when you give it this kind of full-bodied attention and dedication. 
you're standing, right? So what's happening? Your blood's flowing, right? Maybe you're walking or pacing, which is good for your brain too, because you're not thinking about the fact that you're standing in one place. You're, you're getting into this rhythm. And if you're reading it out loud and processing every single word, and then also hearing yourself say it, these are all the most powerful tools that your brain has for memorization. And it's all being deployed at once, which leads me to my final tip, which is to write down all the thoughts and ideas that come to mind. This is tip number four. Really solidify the experience by having a pen uh, or a pencil or a highlighter to jot down ideas as they pop up while you're standing and reading out loud. Tons of questions and feelings and ideas are bound to bubble up while you're doing this. So have it handy, that way you can capture those ideas and quickly write them down in the margins of your Bible. Or if you have a Moleskine journey, journal, journal or if you have anything else, a little notebook handy, whatever you do, don't trust yourself to remember it until the end. You'll be exhausted from reading. You'll, you'll have fleeting thoughts and ideas. They'll vanish the minute that you finish. Get them written down as you're going, no matter what you do. And don't, and by the way, if you're caught up on the idea of writing in your Bible, don't worry about that either. I know that's a big deal for a lot of people and they worry, oh, if I write in it, am I defiling it? No, 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 just this is a copy of the text. Don't worry about that. It's meant for your personal edification, so it's okay to write in it. I like to treat it like a time capsule of my journey and growth in my love and knowledge of God. Think of it that way. If you jot down all your thoughts and ideas in the margins of your Bible, just put a little date near it of the time when you started reading this out loud, right? Because you will accumulate a record over time of what you were thinking and reading while reading the Bible in large chunks, standing up, reading it out loud one Sabbath at a time. Once again, we so appreciate it if you took a second to like this video, leave us a comment, and especially subscribe to our channel. That way you'll find all of our helpful videos like this one and more, as well as all the content from my church, New Life at Your House. New Life at Your House is an online church experience and watch party movement that helps you actively love God and each other better every single day, wherever you're located through multiplying communities that practice service and generosity. And you're invited to church right here on YouTube every single Sunday at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time or on demand whenever you have time to watch. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.